Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And yes, here we are uh, back with our preparation for your on ongoing examinations for NTA UGC NET JRF 2023 for paper one. Today's session basically is based on most uh, the, the questions which are ba basically the must revise questions before the examination, which will be covering almost the entire syllabus from the entire syllabus. These questions are taken. So this will help you to ensure that your uh, preparation goes well and definitely some important topics you're not missing out. Before that, uh, yes, before we go ahead, uh, important announcement uh, with respect to quick revision PDF for paper one. This quick revision PDF for paper one will be consisting of uh, 20, uh, sorry, this, this quick revision PDF will be consisting of 2000 plus MCQs, updated MCQs, current affairs, short notes, previous year questions, and most repeated questions. You can get in touch with us on this given WhatsApp number. The package of this is 699. And this is very important for you as a last minute revision PDF. At the same time, important announcement regarding new batches will be, which will be immediately started after this examination for the students who are going to appear for December 2023 examination. And along with that, we also have all the details at our app that is Global Online App. This is how the interface of the app looks like. There are various courses for UGC Net Paper 1, which you can definitely join. Once you join the courses, the courses will be consisting of daily live lectures, recorded classes, 60 plus mock tests, full syllabus notes, 2000 plus MCQs, which are segregated unit wise as per Hindi and English. You will be getting all the information on this uh, specific <coughs> That is on specific unit. You will be getting all the information with respect to the videos, with respect to MCQs. Now. Let's start the session for the day. Now, today we have, as I said, there are some important topics which we are going to revise. So let's see one by one what are those topics. So let's first, let's come to the first topic. Now, the first topic is about your methods of estimating the reliability test. So they have given the reliability test and they have given the description. So test and retest method, alternate form method, split half method and interrated method. And they have given the description. So you have to basically match the description for the given methods okay so what is test and retest method what is alternate form method what is split half method and what is called as your interrated method so one by one just go through all the options okay and just ensure that you are matching uh, the given description very well so what exactly you know what exactly this test and retest method tells very quickly i'll be telling you one by one you know uh, all the methods quickly so retest and retest reliability method is nothing but the method which is you know uh, conducted in order to obtain some test twice over a period of time so that is test and retest method. Okay. Now, when we talk about alternate form uh, test method, that is alternate form test reliability method. So it is about consistency between two different, you know, test. How how much the consistent consistency is, is seen between the two different tests. Then when we talk about uh, next method, that is split half method. Okay. So split split half method. It is you know dividing basically dividing the sets of item uh, in order to form what a comparison which is done by dividing in order to create the subset. So if I give you an example also, so uh, here let us take an example, one half may be, you know, composed of number of questions, another half is composed of odd number of questions. So one is even and one is odd number of questions. So, so far, to understand the technique which is involved in order to solve these questions what is required is split half method that is divided into two parts okay and then next comes is your interrater okay that is called as interpreter reliability method it is basically the extent of you know uh which is done based on the extent of observers or examiners uh with respect to the issue of consistency so these are the uh quick understanding about the methods. Now, let's see what is the right answer. So, coming to the right answer for the given question. So, option number four, that is this option, your option number four, 
Now let's see what, what is option number four and how it stands. So A is that is test and retest method that is administrating the same test to the same group of two different sessions. As I said, B is four, that is alternate method. It is forming, you know, two, two forms to test the same group at two different sections. Then we have split method. Split method tells about what? Administrating the test in one session with two equivalent halves of the test. That is splitting it. And your interrated method, two or more rater scores the test independently. So in that sense, your option number uh, four is what the right answer. Now let's go to question number two. So let's see what is question number two about. So question number two is about the assertion and reasoning question. So let's see assertion. Fear of failure and pressure to achieve should not be induced in children to ensure that every child gets good marks in examination. So you should never inculcate that fear of failure and pressure into the child in order to good, get good marks in the examination. That is the assertion, the statement. Reason is for meaningful learning to take place. It is important that children should have a sense of physical and emotional security. So this, uh, for the given question or for the given assertion statement, they're saying in order to have a meaningful learning, it is important that you know, you should have that sense of physical and emotional response, sorry, security. So in this sense, let's see what the right answer stands for, okay, for the given question. So which answer is correct? So answer number, that is your answer number one. Now let's see what this answer number one indicates. Your answer number one, that is option number one, indicates that both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation. Now see. What is given over here in the question? Fear of failure and pressure should not be induced. Should not be induced. So it is telling. That's the reason you have to read the question very carefully. It is telling you that it should not be induced in the children to ensure that every child gets good mark. It means it is not necessary always or every time to ensure that the children, uh, the child, okay, or a specific child is induced with the fear of pressure or failure. It is not necessary. Okay. Now, when we talk about uh, reason, the given reason, that is they are telling that for meaningful learning, you can make them feel a sense of physical and emotional security, but don't induce them with what? Don't induce them with your fear of failure and pressure. So, yes, treatment number one stands to be right. Okay. Yes. Now, moving next to the next question. Okay. The next question says that the purpose of man is to primarily develop his own spherical nature and then the nature of spherical being as such to train and represent their nature. The view was given by whom? Yes, such type of statements comes very obviously. And there they are once in a while such such type of statements are given by, you know, by the UGC or uh, NTA net. So here they are talking out the purpose of man, okay, is primarily. Just read the question, you know, very carefully. No question, you don't have to understand the statement, but it is, you know, it is asking you about some, some view. And what exactly it, 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 it is saying that. The purpose of man is primarily to develop his own spir spherical nature and then the nature of, you know, spherical being such as uh, to train and represent that nature. So basically, what does it mean that you need to cultivate, you need to ensure that the, the thought process is cultivated, which is very fruitful and definitely which... Uh, has a multi uh, purpose or I mean I mean to say the multi nature okay and this nature you have to train your mind for such type of uh, thinking so basically it was given by whom Rousseau, Vivekanand, Russell or Forbid who came up with this view so yes the right answer stands to be option number four that is Fobel was the one who came up with such type of view or who has given such type of view so the right answer is Fobel okay now Coming to the next answer. Now, the next answer talks about, yes, the ultimate, it is asking about the ultimate aim of education is evolution of total humanity. So, here it is talking about what the ultimate aim of education is total humanity, which includes the evolution of nation, which in turn depends upon the evolution of individual 
this concept of education is known as what? Now, they have given one concept of education. It says that the ultimate aim of education is evolution of total humanity, which induces the evolution of nation, which it, in its turn depends upon the evolution of individual. So whether it was given by integral education, whether it is perfect education, whether it is spiritual education, or whether it is none of this. So yes, let's see. What is the right answer? So the right answer is option number one, that it indicates that integral education. If we want, let's read the statement. It is saying that the ultimate aim of education is about humanity, which includes evolution of nation, which in turn depends upon the evolution of individual. So it is nothing but it is called as what? Integrated education. Such type of, uh, you know, uh, education is called as integrated education. Okay. Now, yes, let's... Uh, Go to the next question. So the next question is using an appropriate parametric test in research. So here they are asking about what they are asking about research aptitude. So here using an appropriate parametric test in research, the researcher finds evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In doing so, which type of error is likely to happen? Here, please read the question very carefully. Using an appropriate uh, parametric test in research project, the researcher finds evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so the null hypothesis is rejected. Which type of error it will be called? Whether it will be called as alpha, beta, both alpha, beta or alpha or sorry, nor alpha nor beta. So it will, it is basically known as what? It is basically called as what? Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> yes, so we are talking about what? We are talking about the parametric test. So let's see what is the right answer over here on option number one. Now see, we are talking about what? We are talking about alpha error. So let's understand first of all, what exactly this alpha error stands for, okay? Or what exactly does it mean, okay? So when we talk about alpha error in hypothesis testing, so here it is rejecting the null hypothesis when it is active actually true. So here what they are saying, using an appropriate parametric test and research project, the researcher finds evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Here the rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true indicates what indicates your alpha error. Okay. Now when I say beta error occurs when the null hypothesis is wrongly written. It means you are not supposed to um, rejected but you have rejected it okay uh, in that case it will be called as what it will be called as your beta error so alpha error occurs when okay when we uh, let's let's understand it very well alpha error occurs when the null hypothesis is rejected enormously that is a mistake it is rejected and be beta error, it is basically, it is wrongly rejected. So in such case, I have cleared that what will be alpha error and what will be beta error. Okay. Now let's come to question number, uh, next question that is sampling. It is talking about sampling techniques and we have done this question. Uh, in fact, this topic also very much in detail. So let's understand what exactly this, uh, the, the question is and how you will come to the answers. So it is talking about sampling techniques used, okay, and description. So whether it is simple random sampling, systematic sampling, dimensional sampling, for your information, we have done very well. Dimensional sampling is nothing but a part of extension of quota sampling, okay, and snowball sampling. So we have done very well. Snowball sampling also we, we have revised very well. So it is asking about what it is asking about the sampling techniques, and it is giving the description. So let's see how many of you. I'll just give some time so that you come to the right answer. And how many of you are coming to the right answer? Let's see. So yes, let's see the right answer. What exactly the right answer is. That is your option number two. Now let's see how the right answer stands to be, you know, uh, how it matches the pairs. So when we talk about A, that is simple random sampling, option number two, that each unit is given independent uh, chance of being picked. Yes, since simple random sampling, we have studied this very well. Every unit is given equal chance of getting selected. Okay, every unit is getting an equal chance of getting selected is known as simple random sampling. Then 
option that is next is systematic sampling so systematic sampling where the the sa the samples are drawn with the help of certain systems uh, you know derived okay so yes desired sample sizes so option b that is is third option dimensional sampling it ta talks about you know specific features which are uh, which are identified before drawing a sample structure and snowball sampling that is snowball sampling talks about what it first member unit is identified and it, it's used to identify the second so it is basically called as what it is basically called as your network sampling okay is it clear so option number two stands to be right answer okay then let's move ahead ahead now coming to the next question so next question is basically on communication so let's see what it talks about so efficacy of written communication depends on what efficacy is basically efficiency of written communication depends on lengthy presentation complex sentence structure editing after writing brevity that is briefness in sentences use of strong words or effective use of words so we, we are talking about what we are talking about efficacy of written communication. So it's dependent, it's depend on what? Efficacy, as I said, it's nothing but it is called as what? Efficiency in written communication. So efficiency in written communication indicates what? It indicates lengthy presentation, it indicates complex presentation, complex sentence structure, or it indicates, you know, uh, editing after writing, brevity in statements, uh, sentences, use of strong words or effective use of words. So from the given option, you have to start and highlight those options which brings efficiency in written communication. So let's see when we talk about efficiency in written communication, that is option number your option number what comes three that is option number three it means your editing after writing okay or your brevity in sentences briefness as well as use of sorry effective use of words these all indicates what efficacy that is efficiency in writing okay now let's see next question the next question sorry yes next question stands to be usb drives all also known as flash drive so we are talking about what we are talking about USB drives, which are known as flash drives. So these devices used by banks to automatically read those unusual numbers on the bottom of the checks and deposit slips is known as MICR. Now, what does it it indicates whether the statement this is from I, ICT, but yes, they have indicated some general topic also over here. So what are uh, what is true? What is false? Whether statement one is true, statement two is tr true, or both are true, or both are false. So one is true, one is false. So let's see how many of you are able to <coughs> how many of you are able to answer this question very well. Uh yes. So what we talk about MICR. So MICR is basically magnetic ink character recognition. So that it is saying that USB drives are also known as flash drives and it is just a general statement it's not connection or you just have to tell the statements are right or wrong device used by banks to automatically read those unusual numbers on the bottom of the checks and slips okay is known as micr so yes in this case from the given statement statement one st as well as statement two both stands to be what both stands to be true so your right answer is option number one okay now, coming to the next question is your, sorry, yes, founders, name of the companies and founders, Apple, Microsoft, Infosys, Airtel. So, you have to match, okay, the right options. Uh, you, you need to understand well, what are the right options and then accordingly you have to go ahead. Okay, so we have the name of the companies on one hand, that is column A. And we have the list of the founders in column B, B that is a list, list two. So you have to answer that whether it is which type of, you know, which type of uh, company and who are the founders. Okay, so we have Apple, we have Microsoft, we have Infosys and we have Airtel. Okay. Yes. So coming to the right option. Okay, yes, let's see what is the right option. So option number four. Yes, now if you see 
Apple, that is which was being founded by Steve Jobs. Then we have Microsoft, uh, Bill, Ga Bill Gates, whereas my uh, Infosys with Narayan Murthy and Airtel with Sunil Bharti Mittal. So yes, your option number uh, four, that is option number four stands to be your right option. Okay. Yes. Then comes the next question. Yes. So, yes. Okay, let's see. So now again, this are what these are the statement questions. Okay, it is it is talking about what two statements. Every time statement one, every time a device connects to a network, it is given at internet protocol address. Statement two is device that never disconnect retain with the same IP address two statements are given two separate statements are given and its statement says that devices which are connected okay to a network it is given it is given what it is given in the IP address that is internet protocol whereas statement two says that device that disconnects okay sorry device that disconnects never disconnects written to the same IP address so from the given statement, that's what stands to be true, what stands to be false. So yes, let's see which statement stands to be true, which statement stands to be false. Okay. So yes, from the given options, statement one as well as statement two, that is your answer one stands to be true as well as answer, uh, statement one as well as statement two stands to be uh, statement one and two both stands to be what both stands to be true okay yes for today's day you know we will be just doing this much uh, part and as students who are waiting for your that is for your paper two also we do provide paper two material we do provide paper two mcqs and notes so these mcqs and notes will be available with the respect to what? With respect to a package of rupees uh, 1280 after a discount of 20%. The actual price is rupees 1600. You can get in touch with us on these given WhatsApp number in order to get a copy of your uh, uh, study material for paper 2. Tomorrow we'll be coming up with new questions, which is must revision before you go for your examination. That's all for the day. Thank you, everyone.